Uh, Derek, it's another main event for you. I mean, this just seems like every time out now. So, is this, I mean, is it still a big deal for you to be a headliner of a UFC event? It's whatever. You know, uh, Jake Paul just headlined a um, boxing event. So, I don't know if I feel so good anymore. <laughs> That's a terrible way to look at it. You should still feel good. Uh, best stretch of your career right now, I think, right? I mean, you've had a longer win streak in the UFC, but main events, ranked opponents. I mean, does this feel like the best stretch of your career? Oh, yeah, I would definitely say it's the best stretch of my career. Um, we're getting it done against these young, exciting, uh, hungry guys who've been putting together streaks, earning a fight against, you know, a tough, savvy veteran. So, What's the key right now? I mean, you're talking about a decade into your UFC run at this point, and it feels like you're hitting your prime. What's, what's the key to be doing it? I'm not, I'm not trying to call you old by any stretch, uh-huh. but a seasoned veteran. Hey, as long as I don't look old, then I'm fine. You know what I mean? I look like – I'm just looking at myself. I look like I'm about 25 or so. So, yeah. But, um, nah, it's just about keep improving, keep getting better. And that's what I've been really focused on, just working on my holes. Ultimately, just being the best martial artist that I can be. And it's just been working out. So let's talk about this matchup when they gave it to me. Darren's um, – you know, he's had, some, he's had some losses recently, but obviously he's a very dangerous guy and a very well-known guy. So what, what did you think when this was the, the matchup that you were given? Um, I watched a lot of Darren Till. You know, he's very tricky. Um, in this game, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some, but the, the game is to win way more than you lose. And I wouldn't say all of his losses were straight like he got annihilated. Like, let's go a couple of his losses. He was winning the fight and got caught, you know. So, like, those are the things that I take from a fight. I dissect it and look at it like that and then understand that the skill set that he possessed and then plan with that. Nice. Is it a bit of a, a mental fight ahead, too? I mean, he's, you, you guys both have pretty strong presences on social media, and he's not afraid to, to poke the bear a little bit, man. Is it, is it a psychological warfare, too? Yeah, I mean, it's all, it's all fun and games. We took our jabs at each other and had a little bit of fun. Now, you know, it's fight week, it's business time. So the goal is to not be the person that's going to be a meme after this, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so it's not personal to you. You just want to make sure that you don't end up being that guy on social media after this. Yeah, it's not personal. You know, it's fun. You know, the one with Hollins was kind of personal. He liked to talk a lot of trash and take some serious jabs. And he kind of believed some of the stuff he was saying. Till just laughing and joking and um, pretty much just being like a, a goofy person. And it, it's kind of tasteful, I guess. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sometimes he get a little out of hand, you know. Uh, he hasn't got on hand with me, but, yeah, he definitely get a little edgy, on, you know, sometimes. Nice. Uh, obviously a big fight, but a lot of us, I think, are trying to figure out what are the exact stakes in this fight. I mean, have you, have you thought about that? Because, right, I mean, we know the title's on hold for a little bit, that we still got time, and there's some other names that all say, hey, I'm the number one contender. So what do you think is at stake here? I mean, are you looking at this as a potential number one contender fight? Oh, yeah, I'm definitely looking at it as a uh, potential number one contender fight. Um, just being with what I've done, you know, I've – four fights in a row against these guys that were supposed to be contending for titles. Like, if I didn't give these guys their hiccups, then they would be talking about these guys fighting for titles. I mean, I remember they was talking about Ian Heinish. You know, he comes in and looks really good early, and they were saying, man, this guy, he's, like, trending to be the next title challenger. I shut him down. Um, <clears throat> then, you know, uh, Shabazzian came around, and everybody was talking about the youngest champion, you know, then I shut him down. You know, and then Hollins came five in a row. He beats me. His track, tar- his track talk, his trash talk was already directed towards Izzy. So, like, that was looking like a fight that was 100% going to be made, you know. So, I shut that down. So, like, I, if I go out here and finish till, you know, um, definitely, you know, I, five in a row should be next, you know, after Izzy and Whitaker. It's awesome. Last thing for me, what kind of fight do you think we see here? Because it seems like a fight where you might want to rely on your wrestling. Um, but I, I don't know, maybe you want to go, like I said, you want to finish. Maybe you need something spectacular to put that exclamation point on it. So what kind of fight do you think we see here? Yeah, I'm just going to do my thing, you know, show my growth. And uh, I'm going to take my time and let the fight develop. You know, I'm looking to get the finish. But um, at the same time, I'm not in a hurry. You know, Till said he wants to finish it in the first round. So maybe he'll be in a hurry. Um, if he want to come fight like that, I'm okay with him, you know, bringing the fight, pushing the pace. So. I'm good however the fight goes. Um, just want to go out there and get a finish and make no doubt that I should be next. Hey, Derek. We talk about the mental warfare side to this thing. Darren's got a history of DMing his opponents and sending them weird stuff. I'm curious, has he DMed you through this process? Oh, yeah. Me, we've been like kind of like talking about fighting for about seven months now or something like that. Yeah, he DMed me quite a few times, you know, talking about the fight, uh, just sending random stuff. Um, yeah, man, the, the, the guy's a troll for sure. He, he's funny. Can you just give us an example of, like, what's the weirdest stuff or the most random stuff he sent you? I don't know. He probably said, good morning, 
hope you and the you and the kids are having a, a good week. And then the next thing you know, like ten seconds later, he sent me the middle finger. So like, <laughs> <laughs> that's unpredictable. Do you kind of enjoy that? I mean, because because it's like you said, the last time it was a bit more personal. Do you kind of enjoy it when you know it's just good natured? Yeah, it's like who can be the the most wittiest. So yeah, it's it's fun. It's funny. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, you mentioned it at the start of this, and um, I don't want to dwell on it too much, but the Jake Paul Tyron thing, I'm curious, would you get the tattoo if you could get a rematch? Would I get a tattoo if I get a rematch? I, with Tyron, man, I would say just, you know, don't do it, man. It's just it's just not. It's, just, it, it's a bad look. Like, I don't know. It's just you you made money cool, okay? Uh, I understand he's like, man, if this fight, this fight sell, sold, the next can be like super crazy. So he's seeing that. But at the same time, man, you got to have some standards, man. You got to draw the line somewhere. And if you're just getting guys' names tattooed, I mean, Tyron's witty, though. He's funny. I heard him say, uh, I'm going to get your name tattooed right next to my kids. So he was like, kept saying, like, I, I'm your dad, or whatever. So he might try to make it like a funny thing, which, you know, it, it could be perceived that way. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I have to draw the line somewhere. Thanks, man.